This is all your fault. That's right. This is your fault. You know who you are. This mess we're in, this mess we're in, you did this. You did this. This is your fault. But not you, though. No, not you. I know. You're just as frustrated as I am. Listen, you and me, we understand what's going on. You see, we see, we see between the lines. We get it. We get it. But, but you, but you, oh, you better get your act together, Buster. Well, I guess... I guess it's also kind of my fault. Okay, all right, whatever, all right, it's both our faults, all right? Okay. All right, but you're partially responsible for this. Game review. That's right, folks. Today we are talking about all video games ever made, forever. I'm not doing a specific review today. I'm not doing a specific analysis. I'm just gonna be talking about video games and the fact that you and me and everyone who has the capability to pick up a controller or a mouse and keyboard and play a video game and get through it and talk about it and think about it, we are responsible for everything going on right now. Do you know why we're responsible? Because inherently, everyone who plays a video game is a video game journalist, reviewer, tester, whatever you wanna call it. If the games these days are bad quality, it's because people keep paying for dog shit games. That's just the way it is. I'm not gonna apologize for it. People are paying for garbage. I mean, just in the past few years alone, how many games have come out that are just unequivocally abhorrent? Think of things like Cyberpunk. This game was a legitimate scam. They hyped it up so hard. They hyped it up for so long. They played it out to be the greatest gaming experience ever. And when it launched, it physically was not playable. And what happened to that game? They got so much pressure from everybody who bought the game, everybody who played the game, that they were forced to make it good. But guess what? Damage has already been done. I will never touch Cyberpunk 2077 purely on principle. I know some people probably don't give a shit about that, but for me, it means something. Okay, I'm taking a stand. Would you like to be seated? No thanks, I'll stand. What if we go a little bit further back, all right? Let's look at Battlefront 2 from EA in 2017, okay? People might have enjoyed playing that game when it came out, but the reality is that it got ratioed into oblivion because of the predatory loot box and progression system that they implemented. This game got hit so hard that it got taken to the mother United States Congress. There were legislative measures taken against this game. because of the loot boxes, they didn't go to Congress because of a bad game, because they were bad at making games. How long did it take for the predatory practice of loot box gambling in video games to be recognized by a government authority as something so predatory? That practice went on for years without any kind of regulation. Why would the equation ever improve if it's already making them money? And then, oh, what do you know? EA comes out with something so bad that it throws all these gamers into a rage and it attracts so much attention that it goes to the Hawaii Supreme Court and gets outlawed there and gets taken to the United States Congress and oh my gosh, something got accomplished because people were vehemently opposed to the practice of a corporation. But do you want to know the consequences that occur when a gaming company goes so unchecked for so long by its fans that they're able to basically say and do whatever they want. Look no further than Marvel Rivals. This game included a non-disparagement clause for the alpha testing for any content creators that wanted to put their gameplay on public platforms and voice their opinions. <laughs> oh, you have an opinion on this game? Oh, well, you better make sure it's the right opinion there. And I quote, the content creator agrees not to make any public statements or engage in discussions that are detrimental to the reputation of the game. What? 
This includes, but is not limited to, making disparaging or satirical comments about any game-related material such as game features, characters, or music, what? engaging in malicious comparisons with competitors, or belittling the gameplay, or differences of Marvel rivals, or providing subjective <laughs> negative reviews of the game. My goodness! You, as a content creator reviewing our game, are not allowed to have a negative opinion of the game. Oh, what's that? It's subjective? Don't care. You're not allowed to voice it. <laughs> we are your soul now! <laughs> they recently backpedaled. They backpedaled hard on this stance, but oh my gosh. The fact of the matter is that they took the stance to begin with. Let's take a look at this apology, shall we? Today is the third day of Alpha Testing. We are truly grateful. This is where it gets good. We would like to apologize for any unpleasant experiences or doubts caused by the miscommunication of these terms. <sighs> We sincerely apologize for the confusion, suspicion, and frustration caused by these excessively restrictive terms. Okay, so which one was it, Marvel? Was it a miscommunication in the clause, or was it that the terms were excessively restrictive? Because you don't really get to say both. You kind of have to pick one. Either the consumers didn't understand what you were actually saying, or you were saying something that was egregiously restrictive and the consumers understood it perfectly. So, <laughs> which one would you like to pick? And let's look at some of the replies to this just obscene, obscene acknowledgement of their obscene behavior. The game is amazing. Can I have a key, please? Please add Black Widow. Make sure to bring it down to PS5 and XSX. Matches are too short, characters need balancing all- oh, No, 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 You're not allowed to say any of that. You're not allowed to say any of what you just said. Delete that tweet, block that man, and blacklist him forever and all eternity. I'm banned from your Discord because I dared to criticize the game. Oh, man, a blessing in disguise. Okay, but anyway, the point that I'm making is that there are still people who are perfectly willing and able and are probably enthusiastic about the prospect of spending money on this game. So this non-disparagement clause, this egregious and obscene action taken by a company, this is your fault too. Remember what I said at the beginning? This is your fault. If a company does something like this, doesn't matter what their response is to the backlash, there should be a universal agreement to boycott this game forever, to never allow a company to get away with something like this. Fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me two times. Remember what I've said now so many times? This is your fault. It's gonna happen again. It just is. Somebody's gonna do it. Somebody's gonna have the cojones. And guess whose fault it's gonna be? It's gonna be yours who paid for Marvel Rivals. It's gonna be yours who had a positive opinion of Marvel Rivals. I don't care how good and enjoyable the gameplay is. The game comes from a company that is so rotten to their core that they will not allow you to play their game on a public platform and express a negative opinion about it or compare it to another game. That is a company that deserves absolutely no attention from any of its audience. If you pay for this game, if you spend any money on this game, if you spend any time on this game, you forfeit your dignity as a human being with the ability to think for yourself. Non-disparagement clause. It's a non-disparagement clause. That's all it is. It's just a little non-disparagement clause. Me. That's my opinion! It's like voting. You effectively have two choices, right? You could either vote for Oopa Loopa Egomaniac with self-esteem issues or America's creepy senile great uncle. People always say, well, you just gotta pick the lesser of two evils. Wrong. There's actually a secret third option that some people just don't seem to understand. What if we all just decided not to vote for the people who are constantly being spoon fed to the masses by the unceasing propaganda machine that pretends to be the free press? We're not talking about video games anymore, are we? Well, it still applies. Please clap.
What if we all just decided to stop playing AAA games that were put out by companies like Bethesda, EA, Ubisoft, Activision, Blizzard, etc. It would shake them to their cores. And this Marvel Rivals thing is a perfect example of that. They backpedaled hard. They were so afraid that they couldn't even get their thoughts out straight. First it's a miscommunication, then it's excessively restrictive. Which one is it? They don't even know. They're trying so hard to cover their tracks that they're just calling it whatever they think will make people happy. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made up tip. But all these companies, they would literally be scrambling to clean up the mess if one day every gamer on earth just suddenly decided to stop playing, buying, accepting the broken, incomplete, predatory garbage that these companies put out. They would be powerless to do anything but beg for your mercy. But you just don't want to do that. You just want to keep giving them your money. Why? Why? And I'm not even saying that we should never ever buy AAA games ever again, but I'm saying we should be extremely careful because of the past behavior of the vast majority of these companies and the way that they both monetize their games and release unfinished, incomplete, broken garbage that is just not worthy of the launch days that they hype. If anything, what I'm advocating most for is to stop buying games at launch. Be honest with yourself and with others. Is this game worth the price of admission? Does it include enough content to justify the price tag? Because you know full well how high these price tags are getting at this point. Does the game actually function? Is there a fair amount of content for the price that you paid? And at the end of the day, don't be afraid of the refund button. I know that it is sometimes so hard to get a refund on the game, but guess what? You don't need to buy the game at launch anyway. You can go watch YouTube reviews. You can go watch Twitch streamers playing it. There are so many avenues for you to take before buying the game. Like I mentioned before, there are success stories. Battlefront 2, Cyberpunk, and even most recently, Helldivers. Granted, Battlefront 2 and Cyberpunk were both kind of on the level of taking on class action lawsuits for incentivizing gambling and children and false advertisement, respectively. But Helldivers 2 is a perfect example of a game that functions exceptionally well and is not predatory in the slightest, yet they still took an unpopular approach. This graph is so significant. Do you understand what this graph represents? It represents our ability as consumers to give the middle finger to the corporate overlords. They live and die by our money. This graph was created by a community of players that have a deep appreciation for the game that they play. This graph was created out of support for the game. It was created out of a love for the game. This is a graph of a review bomb that entails a deep-seated love and appreciation. How paradoxical. No, it's not, because all of these people knew that if they didn't do this, their game would devolve into shit. It's not a paradox. If you stop supporting a game, the company will be forced to respond as it happened in Battlefront, as it happened in Cyberpunk, as it happened, as it will happen in Marvel Rivals if they try to do something like this again. But Arrowhead and Sony heard the reviews and they backpedaled. And to Sony's credit, they could have doubled down on their decision to require PSN accounts. I mean, that is perfectly within their rights, but they didn't. If you ask me, they took the smart approach. They chose that age old adage, the customer is always right. What happened to that? <laughs> because you're entitled, oh, you're entitled. Oh, you're well, I'm giving you my money, so yeah, I should be a little bit entitled if, you know, I'm handing you my f***ing cash. If only every gamer in the world had this same mentality, how much better would things be? How few and far between would the complaints be for each upcoming game release? If we held to this standard, the AAA games that would currently be being released in this era of modern gaming history would be bordering on some of the most insane experiences imaginable on a mouse and keyboard slash controller. If you care about a game, or game developer, or game publisher, and you see that the latest iteration of said game is becoming worse and worse and worse and worse, do not 
buy it. If that same Helldivers 2 Solidarity was held by every gaming community and every game that was released and reviewed, how much pressure would that put on AAA companies to ensure that they are releasing games 1 in a stable state ready to be played and 2 with enough content to justify both the price of admission for the game itself and the amount of time that you spend playing it. But no. Instead, we're stuck with the same broken, buggy, soulless, cash grab, unimaginative slop because fanboys like to white knight for billion dollar companies like EA, Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard, 343 Industries, Marvel. People are completely blinded by their bias. It's either that or they associate their identity so much with these corporate franchises that they become either too proud or too ashamed to admit that they're licking the boots of people who probably hate them as human beings. And they don't even understand that what they're doing is fundamentally destroying the games that they love. I said it in the beginning, and it wasn't just a dramatic hook to grab your attention and pull you in. I meant it. This is your fucking Fault. Some people are content paying $80 for broken and unplayable garbage. Others are happy to pay that price for a game that is content barren. Others still will shell out their entire life savings to gain access to some stylish virtual clothing that is objectively overpriced. Guess what? You're ruining it for the rest of us. All of you. Even the cosmetic bunch. Actually, anonymous shill number 543,221, that microtransaction that you paid for actually does take away from the experience of the game. Want to know why? Because now, the publisher in question is incentivized to prioritize that aspect of their shitty game, the little microtransaction shop, instead of the actual physical mechanical content that makes up the gameplay experience. Now they are focused on trying to suck as much money out of you and by proxy, me, in exchange for meaningless virtual drip instead of giving us a game that is worth its weight in gold. So yes, it does subtract from the experience of the game. It subtracts resources, developer attention, and publisher incentive. So that argument has been nullified. Sorry. If you get access to some of this garbage for free because of Game Pass or PlayStation Plus Premium, you know, that's fine, whatever. At least, at the very least, leave a negative review, warn people about what is wrong with the game, and if you're thinking about buying the game, read the reviews. Look at YouTube channels that have played the game and reviewed the game and make sure they're not just sponsored and shilling for these companies. If you pay for EA Play or Ubisoft Plus, then you're kind of a much bigger part of the problem than you might actually realize, and I don't want to get into that. And I know some of you might say, well, some of us enjoy actually playing these games and you shouldn't take that joy away from us. And boy, oh boy, I can't wait to read those comments down below. By the way, comment down below, but please don't comment that. And if you comment that, I will know that you didn't watch my video, shame on you. But anyway, what I have to say to those people is just imagine how much more enjoyable the game that you're playing could be if consumers were able to successfully force the hand of AAA companies into not releasing broken, unplayable, buggy, soulless, cash grab garbage. Think of how much more soul there would be in the content. Think of how much more interesting the writing and the characters might be. Think of how much more complex the mechanics of the game could be. All these things, they don't need to be out of this world, innovative, the craziest experiences ever. There's beauty in simplicity too. But at the end of the day, the only formula that the AAA companies understand is the one that makes them the most money. But as it stands, I'm sorry to say, if you fall into this category of people, you enjoy playing bad games. You have shitty taste in games. <laughs> I feel like a doctor delivering bad news to his patient. I'm sorry, but your taste in video games, it's just awful. <laughs> what am I gonna do? There's no cure. 
There's no cure right now, I'm sorry. Did you enjoy Starfield? Well, it's a shallow husk of what it ought to be, and it could have been one of the greatest space exploration RPGs in the planet. It had great ship customization and building, and they recently made it so much better, but that was something that should have been at launch. But anyway, think of how much more fun Starfield could be if people pressed Bethesda just a little bit more to stop releasing garbage. Do you keep buying the next Call of Duty every year? <laughs> it's never gonna get better! <laughs> hey, did you enjoy Star Wars The Last Jedi? <laughs> well, you're contributing to the downfall of that franchise too. <laughs> Put another gay diverse woman in it, make it more fucking lame! Look, I sit here spewing these words at you, but I have to acknowledge my own part in this. I'm completely perfect and innocent. No, I am a hypocrite for saying a lot of this, okay? I have spent my fair share of money on dog shit games that I knew better that I shouldn't have bought. Like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, I still regret buying that game to this very day. And I have spent a large amount of money on microtransactions for shitty games. And for that, I'm sorry. I was naive. I myself got caught up in the battle pass fever pitch. I bought Modern Warfare 2 back in 2022 because I got got by that A tier Call of Duty marketing team. I'm over level 200 in Fallout 76. That one I'm really ashamed about, but it's okay. I've seen people like level 3000 in that game, so. <laughs> but all these games, I was always hoping in the back of my mind that I would have enough fun to justify the purchase. But even then, even so many years ago, the writing was on the wall. But I was just overtaken by nostalgia, wanting to play these games with my friends, and just, you know, being biased towards a lot of these games. But new games were constantly releasing in unplayable states, and some games were literally just reskinned versions of the same game that released a year before. And I'm not even just talking about Call of Duty Vanguards, okay? This is every freaking sports game that comes out Madden, FIFA, 2K, anything that is it involves a ball. I'm guilty of playing and paying for many of these games that I am yelling at you not to play or pay for. But believe me, I have thrown many of these games away and I won't even touch them purely on principle. But it also gets in my head sometimes that, hey, I'm only one person. So what? What does it matter if I'm playing or not playing this game? It's not going to make a difference. But this is the exact mentality that is contributing the most to this problem. We're alienating ourselves. We're not thinking of ourselves as a group of consumers who have the power to move these companies. We're thinking of ourselves as individuals who are acting individually and can't do anything on our own. But we can. It's happened before. And it can happen whenever we want. Whenever we get our shit together. This is not a fluke. This is proof that you and me possess the capability to shut these corporations down. So act like it. Close your wallets and they will grovel. <laughs>